So in August 2021, I made a decision to purchase the B-Bars from the company Baseblocks. I did a first impressions review that you can find on the channel if you haven't seen it already. I'll put a link to the first impressions video down in the description. I've had these B-Bars for nearly two years now. This video will look and focus on how they currently held up in those last two years of use. How I've been using and storing the B-Bars. How do I currently use them because it has changed over time since I've had them. And lastly, I'll answer the question. If I could do it all over again, would I still buy the B-Bars or should I have passed and saved my money or even bought something else? If you would like to see more health and fitness content, please like, subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the next video. In the last two years, I've been using the B-Bars on average for three to four sessions a week. It depends if I go to the gym, I don't tend to use them as much. However, there have been times when I was busy with work and I didn't go to the gym for probably weeks at a time. I relied on these B-Bars for workouts every day. I was also using all the different modes of the B-Bars, so I would be adjusting them quite often. The different modes included using them in low mode for rows or high for pull-ups and dips. The B-Bars have been great for doing pull-ups and dip exercises as I don't have another way to do these exercises at home. I must say usually when doing workouts at home, pull-ups and back exercises are generally pretty hard to do unless you have the equipment like dumbbells, barbells and pull-up bars. So I can definitely say that these B-Bars have been used frequently in the last two years and have quite the high mileage on them. This is probably one of the most important sections of the video because where you store your B-Bars makes a difference in the condition it's going to be in the long run. And you're going to see the link between the current condition of my B-Bars and the different places it's been stored for the last two years. So the first couple months, my B-Bars were first kept outside in an extension, but it was completely covered and always protected from the elements Therefore, it wasn't affected by the sun and most importantly, moisture from the rain. After the B-Bars were kept in a garage for maybe around one to two months, I was able to do my workouts in there. And once again, the B-Bars were pretty, well, well, they were protected against the elements. This was also during COVID times and the B-Bars were amazing for calisthenic training at home. Now here is where my B-Bars gain some rust, specifically in the grenade pins, which you will see when we take a look at them in the next section of the video. So definitely stick around for that one. For maybe six months, the B-Bars were kept outside in an open, undercover type of veranda. This is where I trained, so underneath the shelter, I stored the B-Bars, and I stored them there without disassembling it. Now when I think about it, I could have disassembled and assembled it every time I trained, which would have been easy to store inside. But out of, as you can call it, laziness, convenience, I just let it stay out there. The problem, even though it was under the shelter, the wind would just push the rain right in. And the B-Bars would be getting wet if it was strong rain and wind, which is definitely not what you want. Now they still work, but I believe this was the biggest factor towards the condition they're currently in. And this is an example of real world use because it's great to see how they are holding up because I haven't really treated them uh, that greatly to be honest. And I'm happy to say after moving again, they are back in the garage and staying safe from the elements, which is great for the longevity of these B-Bars. Starting with the main bar, overall the paint isn't too bad. I can say that the paint is still intact. There are a few minor scratches here and there, but I'm pretty happy with it. There are a few scratches at the top and it protrudes a little, which I think was caused when I used to adjust it and put it down on the concrete and it's just scratched there. There is also some rust that is showing in the holes. I wouldn't say it's a lot, but you can see it. Now the bottom bars that connect with the main top bars, you'll notice that there is quite the orange color on the joints where the pins intersect to connect the base poles at the main bars. 
When taking it apart, I assumed it was just rust. As you can see, I cleaned one of the, one of the connections. I just wiped it down with a disinfectant wipe. There is still a discoloration, but it doesn't look like the rust I first thought it was, which is a good sign. The base poles themselves look in pretty decent condition, with no real noticeable scratches and scuff marks within the paint. There's also no noticeable rust on the outside and around the holes. So looking at the base, first noticeable thing I see is there is some rust forming at the base of the stand, which is going to be there from being stored outside for so long. There are a few scratches, the wear and tear type, but overall, once again, the paint looks in pretty good condition. Looking at the holes, there are some rust, which is going to be a common theme amongst the B-bars, but I must say, it's not a crazy amount of rust at all. The rubber feet on the sides are still attached and the rubber material itself is still in good condition. Now looking at the sticky rubber pads that go on the bottom of the base, out of all the parts of the B-bars, these have aged the worst. The pad has come off, there's a lot of dirt, dust, and on the sticky parts of the pad, and where it used to be on the base. The pads not being there doesn't affect the use of the B-bars at all though. I found its purpose is probably for extra grip, but I've never had the B-bar slide um, when using it. So I can live with those rubber pads uh, not being there. For the grenade pins, I can report that they are all functioning and none are broken. Except one of the pins, the loop has come loose, but it still works. Now, as you can see within the grenade pins, there's visible signs of rust. This is where the, this is where we see the connection with the holes and the grenade pins, both showing rust. I've noticed that the pins that are connected to joining the main frame and the legs of the B bars are generally in better condition than the pins connected at the bottom of the bracket. The brackets are structurally fine. There are some scratches on the inside where you can see the paint has come off and is showing a little bit of metal. This I would expect because it slides in to connect the two bars together. Also, I haven't really been that gentle with them either. There is some discoloration on the top, but I wouldn't say it's extremely noticeable. As expected, there's some rust in the holes but that's not going to come as a surprise either at this point. Overall, the brackets, I can say, are in decent condition. Currently, I use the B-bars nearly every session because I can say I haven't been to the gym in around two months. Although, in terms of which mode I use the B-bars in, I use the B-bars only in the high bar mode. I mainly rely on them to allow me to do pull-ups and dips during my home workouts. Don't get me wrong, I can adjust the B-bars to the other modes like I previously used to, but I just find it's more convenient for me to keep it in the high mode for those exercises. You could say that as I've owned the B-bars, I tend to use less exercises on them, although it's important to note that without the B-bars, I would not be able to do pull-ups and dips at home, which is a massive staple for my home workouts. I also currently like to put weight plates on one side of the base of the B-bars and do pull-ups with a wider pronated grip. The weight plates work really well, so I don't have to will have that fear of the B-bars tipping on me. I generally feel pretty comfortable with at least 20, 30 kilos of weight on each side. I've been doing this for a while and I haven't experienced any damage to the B-bars itself. I also wanted to share that the B-Bars in combination with a squat rack is an amazing home workout fitness combination. Most of my sessions that are conditioning or strength have the squat rack and B-Bars working in partnership. I really feel that the two when working out at home cover your strength and calisthenics needs. For example, the Volkswagen CrossFit benchmark workout which is 21, 15, nine reps of bench press with body weight and pull-ups is a great workout that I can effectively do in the garage thanks to a squat rack and B-bars combination. 
The main point is that the B-Bars can also be a great piece of equipment in combination with other piece, pieces of fitness equipment that you may currently have. Now to answer the question, if I could go back, would I purchase the B-Bars again? I can 100% say yes, I would definitely buy it again. There is no doubt that it's expensive, but it's been a great investment for my home workout. And these days, I really rely on home workouts a lot because I don't really like crowded gyms. They are still the only way I can do pull-ups at home. Another major reason is despite how they may look, is they have lasted the test of time and let's be honest, I haven't exactly pampered them. They were left outside undercover for around six months the main thing is that after nearly two years, the B-Bars are still working, going strong, and I still currently use them most days. In summary, the B-Bars after two years gets my tick of approval, and if you keep yours inside, they will last a lot longer than mine. I'm Peter from Health and Fitness Tech, and if you would like to see more health and fitness content, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.